I think I should have put a jumper on. It's jolly chilly down here. I left home this morning and I, as I was watching the temperature gauge coming down the freeway, the temperature's going down and down and down and down. And I'm putting the heater up and up and up. And I'm thinking, shit, I haven't even got a jumper. Anyway, that doesn't matter. We're going to have a bit of a look in here and see what's going on, whether we've got a little bit of flow or not. They don't feel real heavy, but some have got a bit going on. And then I just want to have a look in the brood box as well to see whether the new queens are kicking along. So, anyway, the cameraman decided he wanted to get up early and come for a drive, so here we are. Let's see what we find. Just thought I'd have a bit of a clean off here, try to get all this the other stuff. So apparently we beekeepers are the transferers of disease, so I'm trying not to do that anymore. So you'd look, you'd get rather impressed. Look, I've got my shit cleaned up. <laughs> And all you people that got concerned about my gloves, well, I've taken your warning and I've got more than one pair and it's all good. So, so transition into being cleanly. Less is more, they would say, when it comes to this metho stuff. Try not to burn yourself. Hot sock balls. There we go. Hold it away from your face. No, that's right. Now it's not even going to light. If I had that on a stick, I could be like um, exploring a dark cave or, or what's that bloody tribal, tribal, tribal thing? What was that called on uh, Survivor? Tribal Council, we could have our sticks in the air and going, Hoo -hoo, who the hell's going home? And everybody's saying, yes, shit, yeah, I want to go home for pizza and coke. Bugger this island. Upside down, inside out. <laughs> Ooh, it's hot up the middle then. <laughs> We've drifted away a little bit from the pine needles. Oh, hello. I remember my dad used to use the hessian in the smokers. I think he had a bit of sump oil on the bloody things. I don't know how good that was for the ladies. That <laughs> was a little bit excitable. Mind you, it's quite crazy when you bloody um, actually stuff around with the bees without any smoke. The other day we were just putting a few stickies back on the top, just on the top of the supers. And we thought, ah, oh, stuff it, we won't need to smoke them to do that. And not that we got totally overwhelmed because they were nice, peaceful little girls, but they were not happy. They were not happy at all that we were there playing around. So I think our ancestors were onto something with this smoking business. Funny that, I mean, <laughs> beekeeping's been going on for a few thousand years and they've been smoking bees as long as, as long as that. So far be it for me to cross across the generations of beekeepers that have been smoking their ladies forever. <laughs> I think we've got enough smoke for the week. <laughs> so I thought we'd just wander along and just lift up a few boxes and see what sort of weight we've got. And then just have a bit of a look. Oh, so we'll do that first. Oh. I think we're just looking all of them. It's got a bit of some. My high tech. My high tech bloody measurements. I don't think we're going to get over fat. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll just pop a bit of smoke in some of them and then we'll see if we've got any honey. And then after that, we're going to have a bit of a look in the brood boxes to do our periodic inspection. And that'll be the day cactus, I think. That'll disturb the guard bees. They will go running inside going, help, help, help. <laughs> then we'll lift the lid off and then we'll be going running the other way. I don't think there's much happening up the top of that box. <laughs> These were the splits we did too, so they might not get too excited just yet. It's a little bit of excitement going on in here. Hello, I sound like that dude from the Thailand. <laughs> what was that, that thing? Hey, it's, oh, I can't even think what he is now, but all I remember is him saying, hello, it's somebody from Tiles. I don't know what Tiles he is sometimes, but. Uh, are they getting a little bit of something going on here? It's not too bad, they're starting to get a bit of something going on. See how they build it out? Now I had a bloke talk to me the other day. They were getting a bit excited that the ladies weren't building up in the super box. See how they're really just building the, honey storage if the just a bit of that I've capped off 
this is where the nectar's being collected. And if you look here, they haven't really got these cells filled out because they haven't needed them yet. So they'll fill them cells out and then they'll fill it up with nectar and which will turn into honey when they want to use it. So they're not, they don't really waste any resources, these little ladies. They don't build shit they don't want. So it's pretty cool. So don't stress out. So they're building in the middle, which is what they always do. But if you go back a frame further, they haven't really done anything. They've played around here a little bit, trying to get started. But they don't make comb or the honeycomb, they don't just make it for the hell of it, they only make it when they want it. So don't panic, they'll get to it. As long as there's a nectar flow, of course. That felt heavier than the others. There's nothing happening up there. Oh. <sighs> just to reiterate, these are the splits that we did, so they were actually not at full strength when they come here, so we weren't expecting to get a ridiculous amount of honey off them anyway. They definitely got a nice little pile of bees underneath there. <laughs> but there's still pretty grim honey flow, isn't it? Well, there is a little bit of stuff coming in, but man, it's not real quick. <laughs> anyway, like I said, we weren't expecting these to rabbit on too crazy. Would that be a beekeeper's chuck super wipe? <laughs> I don't know about that. Ah, moving right along. One frame of black brick honey after all that effort. <laughs> and it's not even completely full as it is. That's three quarters there at least. Stepping in the right direction. Look at all these boys sitting up here having a bit of a snack on. Here's the fun part of beekeeping, doing the periodic inspections. Oh, <laughs> anyway, it has to be done. I try to break it up, so I don't know how the blokes get on that have got thousands of hives. They must get pretty hectic, or maybe they've got a heap of people doing it for them or something. I don't know, hell, <laughs> it seems to take a while, especially if you're going to do it completely effectively. Oh, anyway, it's all good. Don't forget to go in your backyard and check your brood box once in a while, even if it is a flow hive. So just don't forget, regardless of got one box or a thousand boxes, you've got to go through the brood box every six months, pretty much. And of course, as you might have seen, we've had a, we had a little bit of a scare with the AFB. Since I've got a little bit paranoid now, washing and cleaning and shit, and like young, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention her, but she's a top chick at the Persa Lass, young Tegan. She actually said, as soon as you get a tickle up, then you get a bit more paranoid. And she's quite right, you do get quite and cleanly so which is unusual for me because I don't know that I'm the cleanest bloke you're ever going to meet but I am I'm clean for my girl so here we go so let's just get this super off they're not going to be real hectic because they're still building up to strength because we've split them off before so we'll just have a bit of a peekaboo I think I'm a convert hessian hessian in your smoker I think I've been converted because I've tried the grass and I've tried the pine needles and I've tried all of that and that's all good in an emergency if you've got you know two or three to do and you're just in your backyard buggerizing around and you just want to light up a smoker because the blooming hessian sack will last for a while but definitely when you've got a scale like this to do hessian's the way to go hello everybody good morning what is that stupid monty python coming anything new today hopefully not <laughs> Harry's been eaten in that scene, but anyway, hopefully Harry's not getting eaten in here. Da -da -da. There's some little ladies making some eggs. Of course, to do this effectively, you've got to shake the girls off. 
they can have a look at their brood properly which gets them very excited I might add they do get a bit excited when you're doing this bit they don't try this in your t-shirt and shorts well unless you're real brave I think it might actually be just avi because it stinks I think it's English but we should try it out because I'm not that clever am I <laughs> well I think I've just got some avi but I need to give, give it a test and see what happens but because I'm not I'm still a bit of a still a bit of a newbie at this game I'm finding out what this stuff looks like. Now I'm a bit paranoid, of course, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> as it would be. Anyway, get a little stick. Grab a bit of this black, gooey, mucky, half of an excited bee bum in here. <laughs> Let's try not to knock that over. That'll suck. <laughs> That'll not achieve anything. Will it? Put some heat on and give it a little rattle up. Else. I don't know. <sighs> Do you think this might be the end of our beekeeping gig? Yeah, hope not. I guess I could always start a YouTube show. I wonder what we'd call that. You wanted to call me the hillbilly beekeeper, but I thought that was a little bit American, so we ended up with the bush bee man in between. So, and you were watching us, so actually maybe we did make a show. So perhaps we better keep on, keep on keeping on. Anyway, keep your fingers crossed for me. So there's this cool little self-test kidding thing, Mijig. Obviously, I think I showed you the last bit. We actually can send the slides away, which we've got in the car when we get to that point. But just for the purposes of this exercise, this will get us information that we need for today. This is basically a pregnancy test to see if you're pregnant with AFB, which hopefully we're not. Well, that will suck if we are. Especially the number one. Although it's interesting because I did find out the other day just because you've got one you haven't got them all in trouble. Well while we're waiting for that to do that bit we'll have a look in the next one. All right dad I got some good news or you're not expecting. Yay! <laughs> Woohoo that must have just been a bit of ABI which is the English version which is still isn't 100% but they will work their way out of that. At least they don't have to be terminated for that disease. I've nearly had enough of that for <laughs> one morning. Well, it's half the afternoon now, so there's been a bit of a day of it. Anyway, it hasn't been a complete disaster. These splits are coming along pretty nice. I think we've got one that I reckon's AFB. We'll have to send the samples away. Well, we only used the kit there, so that's pretty conclusive. We've got a little bit of EFB, got some chalk brood, 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 chalk brood, some moths and the usual crap that goes on. All in all, I think things are on the up and up. They're actually starting to build up a little bit of strength. So, I mean, we're probably not going to get a lot of honey out of these, which I didn't think we would anyway, because, you know, we've split these off. We've doubled them up, so you can't expect everything. You can't double the hives and expect the honey flow, especially this year. But anyway, I think all in all, going good. <laughs>